Chapter 60 Green and Silver Lydia fell to tapping on her foot. She was awake and back in the cavern. The sentinel had gone, and she missed him. Surprised at this feeling, she sat up. By her foot was a black bird. Her first thought was that it was a chuff, one of the mountain crows they had seen so many times. But this bird was all black. The chuffs had red beaks and red legs. It was bigger as well. It was a raven. She sat up and stretched her hand out to the raven. The bird didn't flinch, so she stroked its feathers. The raven twitched its head. It did this a few times before she realised it was beckoning towards the entrance. Lydia got up. Crouching, she unrolled her jacket and put it on. The raven watched. When Lydia was ready, it hopped nearer the mouth of the cavern. Lydia followed. She reached the edge where the rock fell away in a precipice. Lydia looked out over the land. She could feel a strange force pulling her. She was at one end of the pull, at the other was a myriad of creatures, in the air and down in the forests below. The animals, she realised, were willing her to escape the cave. She looked at the raven beside her, and spoke into its mind with hers. Without words, she asked how she could leave. She had her wand, and then used a spell to prevent herself from hitting the ground. But the dragon would be on her before then, if she could even get through the invisible magical wall. In reply, the bird was giving her a taste of the icy wind and a feeling of warmth. It was the glow of trust and of love. The raven then conveyed a sense of urgency. She must go. Now! She leapt out into the night air. It was not dark yet. The sky still had a glow in the west. Then she heard the roar of the dragon. Perhaps it had let her escape so that it could pounce on her. She gripped her wand, ready to fight. Something knocked her to one side, gripping her, stopping her fall. Hold on tight, Lids. I'm going to have to jink to throw that dragon off. It was Sophie. Sophie had flown to her on a broom, caught her, and swung her up on to the tail end. Lydia felt a gush of raw sisterly love. Then the night sky lit up with dragon fire. Lydia lay against her friend's back and clung on, as Sophie threw the broom out of the path of the dragon fire. They felt its heat as it roared past. The dragon, too, roared in frustration. Sophie took the broom down to the foothills of the mountains, weaving and winding across the sky. The dragon followed. Blasts of dragon fire tore through the air, howling past them as Sophie dodged. Wind whipped around them. The dragon roared and bellowed. I'll take us down through the forest and loose him there, Sophie shouted over the noise. No, don't, Lydia begged. Please don't. She'll set the trees on fire to get us. I'm not sure she'll tire first, Sophie warned. How long can we keep avoiding her? Isn't there anything you can do? My one hand's free, Lydia shouted over her shoulder. If you get us behind her, I'll try. I was thinking more of getting all the birds to attack, like before, Sophie explained. It's a frigging dragon, Lydia squawked. A flock of birds will get roasted in an instant. Let me try the wand first. OK, here we go, Sophie said. Love you, sis. Lydia laughed. I bloody love you, Soph. I'm so sorry. Thanks for saving me, however temporarily. Sophie pulled back so hard, Lydia crashed heads with her. In a second, they were above and behind the dragon. Bombarder, Lydia shrieked. The spell hit the dragon in the back and to one side. Lydia knew before it struck that it was stronger than she had expected. The dragon lurched and rolled with the force of the blow. Wow, said Sophie. That was something. Lydia remembered what Oddie had said about her old magic diminishing and her high magic getting stronger as they neared the gateway to the altar world. She hadn't injured the dragon, but she had hurt its confidence. She tried another attack before the dragon could recover. Defindo, she cried. The spell hit the dragon's side, but skidded off the scales. She should have known better. The dragon pulled up in midair and rounded on them. Crap, Sophie shouted and shot away as fast as she could. Trust, Lydia said to herself. Trust and love. That was what the raven had told her without words. Perhaps Sophie had been right about reaching out to the animals of the anteworld. Clinging on as Sophie threw the broom around the sky, Lydia stilled her mind. With her eyes closed, 
she shouted as loudly as she could in her mind. Help! Help us if you can! A stillness came over Lydia's mind. It was like a soothing reply to her call. Trust. Help will come. Keep going, Soph. Help is on its way, she called. Sophie continued to dodge, weaving between rocks and skimming over streams in narrow gullies. The dragon kept her distance and breathed gouts of fire at them. Restricted in their movement by the ravines they were following, Sophie realised the danger of this tactic and soared upwards, buzzing past the dragon. By now their bodies were aching from clinging to the broom. The light had faded from the sky. Lydia could still see, but Sophie was having to steer by the light of dragon fire and Lydia's magic. Lydia told herself to trust, but that wasn't helping Sophie. The dragon didn't show any sign of tiring. If anything, it was regaining its confidence. Lydia kept firing spells when she could, but the dragon took care not to let them get behind her. Lydia got one superb shot in from below and hit the dragon with a bombarding spell to its throat. The dragon was more careful after that. Lydia could feel Sophie weakening. Her dodging was becoming sloppier. Lydia, too, was losing her strength, limited as was her connection with the old magic. Her arms burned with exertion. Her hands slipped on her sister's clothes. Then a roar rent the air. Looking up, they saw another dragon. For a second, Lydia's heart sank. Then she recognised the beast. It was the silver dragon from her dreams. It was real. This one's a friend, she shouted to Sophie. Distracted by the new arrival, Sophie had forgotten to dodge. The green dragon crashed into them with a splintering of wood. They fell, the broken pieces of broom falling with them. With a roar, the silver dragon fell on the green, as she had to cast a slowing charm to prevent them from hitting the rocks. Once on the ground, they looked up at the battle high above. Against the backdrop of the night sky, a glow emanated from the silver dragon. It was as if pride and indignation leaked as light from between its scales. The two dragons wheeled around each other, apparently getting the measure of their adversary. Even at such a distance, the girls could smell the magic and feel the warmth of their fire. The green dragon darted in, jaws snapping but missing the other's neck. Its foe were either way, undulating through the night air. They exchanged blasts of fire. The silver dragon's gout of flame was larger, but neither had much effect. The beasts jousted and lunged and parried several times. Then the silver dragon had its jaws clamped on the throat of its opponent. The green dragon twisted to rake at the underbelly of the silver with its claws. Like a terrier with a rat, the silver dragon shook it by the neck. The green dragon went limp. As he let it fall, the victor stretched his wings wide and bellowed in triumph. Lydia and Sophie hugged and cried with relief. They were safe, as long as the silver dragon remembered he was a friend. The green dragon crashed lifeless into the pool at the base of a waterfall. The victor pulled up meters in front of the girls and settled onto the ground in a tornado of wind from its wings. Lydia stumbled forward, too exhausted to run. The black and silver dragon looked down at the girls. It seemed to smile at them. Hello, smallest queen, it said in its rumbling voice. Thank you, she said, and fell to her knees, weeping. The dragon lowered its head to the ground next to her. Lydia reached out a hand to stroke it. Black tarnish edged its silver scales here and there. It reminded her of the sentinel she had stood beside, watching the castle over the sea. Can you help us find our friends? Lydia asked him as she recovered. There must be days away from here. I cannot, he replied, regret in his voice. I have to leave, but you have your allies. Farewell, little ones. The dragon moved to leave. Wait, Lydia called out. Do you have a name? He looked around. Yes, thank you. Do not forget to hydrate. He turned again and spread his wings. Lydia hid her face in her arms as dust and dry leaves kicked up from the ground. By the time she looked, the dragon had gone, not just flown away, but dissolved into the air, Sophie told her. Where's your rucksack, Lids? Sophie asked. Lost it, she said. We went to a city called... Yeah, Shakika, I know, Sophie informed her. I've been watching over you when I could. 
didn't see you at the top of the tower until it was too late. Have you got any water? Lydia asked. I was dry as a camel's sunburn. Sophie handed over her drinking bottle. So, here we are, a hundred kilometres or more from the others, and no broom. I know, Lydia acknowledged between mouthfuls of water. My old magic no longer works, so I can't move us. I don't want to try apparating, because it might draw the watcher to us. There are two things I have that will help, though. Which are? Sophie asked. I've got my sister back, and I've got my circlet, Lydia grinned. Oh, baby, I... Oh, yeah, I can see it, Sophie said, pointing. Your circlet. Lydia reached up to touch the silver circle around her head. It felt more real than when she'd touched it before. She let her fingers rest on the metal and cleared her mind. Citizens of the forest, she called out. Your queen needs to find her friends. Send your fastest people to carry us. Thank you. I think we'll have time to eat something before anyone turns up, Sophie said. Oh, yeah, Lydia agreed. Oh, ravenous, what have you got? 